Get your own tackle out, get it out, sort it out, get your own tackle out now. Get your own tackle out, find out what it's all about, could be worth a fortune, wow. Rods and reels, floats and creels, granddad would be proud. So, get your own tackle out, tell you what it's all about, get your own tackle out now. Yeah. Hello, I'm Chris Sanford. Welcome to Get Your Old Tackle Out. This is the show that's going to propel you headfirst into the wonderful world of collecting vintage fishing tackle. You like a bit of old tackle, don't you, Ollie? Yeah, love it. There you are, you see. Ollie, you've never heard of a bear that likes vintage fishing tackle? Oh, well, you have now. I'm just saying they have now, you know what I mean, Ollie? Yeah, right. <laughs> Good man. We're going to show you some of the rarest and some of the most valuable tackle in the world and show you what's hot and what's not at the auctions. So, let's have a look at a few pieces that have been frightening bank accounts all over the world. Let's start at Mullock's auctions. This is a 1915 Hardy catalogue. It's a very nice one indeed, beautiful artwork on the front and um, some of the original paperwork inside, the bill of sale, etc. Well, we thought it would make, let's put it this way, we thought it would make about £200. Everyone was rather surprised. It made £400 plus commission. Lovely, hardy catalogue. Um, now then, <laughs> this little lure surprised everybody. It's by a Birmingham maker called Gregory, circa 1900, I should think. We all got rather excited because the uh, lures are doing rather well at the moment and we all thought we'd have a go at it and thought it might make, I don't know, £800, £900. <laughs> How wrong were we? It made £2,800 plus commission, which means that's over three grand. OK, well, whoever bought it, I hope you're enjoying it. Good on you. It was amazing. All that money for that tiny little two inch lure. If you saw it in a tackle box, you wouldn't you'd probably think, oh, not much good, you know, but there we are. What else? Oh, yes. Angling auctions. Uh, they're the big one down in Chiswick in London, Chiswick Town Hall. This beautiful little Hardy Perfect, two and a half inches, it was estimated at six to nine thousand pounds. And we thought, well, you know, maybe, maybe seven, eight and a half top. Yes, it made fifteen thousand pounds. Fifteen thousand pounds. Lovely, eh? <laughs> um, finally, this gorgeous, gorgeous fish. This is a bull trout, a plaster cast of a bull trout by Malloch of Perth. Fantastic thing. Um, I'm not surprised it made £3,200. Of course, the only trouble you have with um, cased and stuffed fish is uh, getting them through the front door. You're not bringing that in here. <laughs> no, well, it, luckily, it, it, it's never happened to me, has it, Ollie? Never. Oh, yes, it has. Uh, Shut up. <laughs> Look, the thing is, all those high prices don't be put off. If you're a new collector or somebody who wants a little few bits and bobs about them, don't be frightened of those high prices. There is plenty out there for you to enjoy and to buy. Uh, in fact, to show you what's out there, let's have a little whiz round my tackle room. You might like to start a collection with early brass reels. These are certainly some of the oldest collectibles. Those with a maker's name can be expensive, but there are plenty out there that are very reasonable money. Then there are the wooden reels. These are really nice. These come mostly with brass fittings, but in rare examples, silver was used. I think they look great and I think they really make a collection. Ah, yes, aerial reels. These are some of the most popular collectible reels and later in the series I'll be showing you some of the rarer models and telling you some of the astronomical prices they've been making. Or you could do as I did and start your collection with a few early fixed spools or threadline reels. They have a fascinating history and are a really good starting point for a collector on a limited budget. Yes, I was on a bit of a limited budget, I have to say. A question I'm often asked is where do you find all this vintage fishing tackle? I always say, well, it could be in the cupboard under the stairs, it could be in the attic, it could be in the garden shed. First of all, have a look round your own place, and especially if you have a relation that used to do a bit of fishing. You never know what might be out there. Um, there's an awful lot on the internet at the minute. Um, I don't do a lot of internet shopping because uh, I like to be touchy-feely. I like to pick it up, look at it, you know, get a feel of it. Um, local car boot sales have turned up some wonderful bits for me. Also local general auctions. They're definitely worth a look at. OK, the two specialist auctions which I mentioned earlier, first of all are Neil Freeman's Angling Auctions. He has two auctions a year at Chiswick Town Hall and uh, as you've seen earlier he has some absolutely splendid bits and pieces. 
Uh, the other auction house is Mullocks up in Ludlow. They have three auctions a year at the Pavilion on Ludlow Racecourse. They also have a vintage tackle fair at the same time as the auction. Everything's organised by John Stevenson, a great guy, very friendly. Um, so I suggest you go along, have a little look, and uh, who knows, you might be able to find something on your shopping list. OK, Ollie, what's next, my dear? Lures. Oh, that's it, lures, of course. You like a few lures, don't you? Yeah, terrific. Good man. Um, for the last two years, I've been doing a little show on my website called Stuff. It caters for fly fishers and fly tyres. So if you don't do any of that, you might, might have missed it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out a few little vintage tackle chunks. And we're taking one out today, as Ollie just said, all about lures. Have a look. My great passion are these lures, old British lures. I really love them and I've been collecting them for about 30 years. But I thought I'd show you some of the more valuable examples because today they're making an absolute fortune. Um, the two names to look out for are Gregory of Birmingham. He's here, all his work's here. He had his workshops in the jewellery district of Birmingham. And if you look very closely, you can see some of the artistry that went into these. In fact, they were known in the old days as a jeweller's job. The other names to look out for is Philip Gein. Um, he was from Richmond in Surrey, and these are his baits here. Really, really nice looking baits. He took a more technical approach. He worked out lots of different ways of disturbing the water. As you can see, they've got hollow insides, and as they went through, they made this really sort of disturbed pattern. Uh, I have to say at this point that I never collected these because of their value, because when I was collecting them, you could buy them for just a few pounds. Um, people used to give them to me. And I was collecting all kinds of information, anything I could. Um, patents, uh, write-ups in old newspapers. Um, and I had it all laid out one day on the dining room table one rainy Sunday afternoon. And my wife said to me, oh, you'll soon have enough for a book. <laughs> Ding! Two and a half years later, after a great deal of research, I was the one in the corner of the British Library covered in cobwebs. Um, I got Mike Starkey to design it and Terry Griffiths to take the photographs. And what we've done, we've put together a little montage of the main book. So have a look at this. Welcome back. Here it is, that very book, The Best of British Baits. With its supplement, it is available at www.medlarpress.com and they have a special deal on at the moment, so do have a look. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. In the next show, I shall be showing you some reels that at the turn of the last century changed the way we fish today. OK? Say goodbye, Ollie. Ta-da. <laughs> I'll see you next time. And remember, it's still out there. It just needs finding. See you soon. Get your old tackle out. Tell you what it's all about. Get your old tackle out now. Yeah. Well, Ollie, how do you think it went? Well, I thought I was all right. Get your old tackle out now. Yeah. <laughs>